Okay, welcome back. And um, indeed, uh, the mom is uh, waiting for us. Uh, so once more, uh, good morning to you, Imam Ismail Chindo Gotemo, Chief Imam Haliru Abdul Jumat Mosque in Burinin Kebi, Kebi State. Uh, first of all, uh, first of all, you know, greetings on the Salah uh, celebration. Thank, Thank you very much. Very yeah. good morning to you all. Yeah. Um, of course, when we come to Ramadan, it's always um, we're looking into the spiritual aspect of things now and the lessons that can be uh, got therein. Um, just about everybody knows it's all about sacrifice. It's even referenced in the Bible, what the Muslims celebrate in a big way. And um, so maybe talk to us about the challenges of sacrifice. We, we all know that, uh, especially when you look at the sacrifice such as the, uh, what the Ramadan um, event is commemorating, we all know that it can be quite difficult. But if people know that there are benefits from it, and this is where President Tinubu was saying that Nigeria's sacrifices will not be in vain. When Ibrahim was going to make the sacrifice, he was sure that it would not be in, in vain. So talk to us, if you will, Imam, on you know, um, the, the, the push-pull aspect of sacrifices. It's a painful thing, but also it is a necessary thing uh, spiritually, perhaps. Yes. Uh, the issue of sacrifice is of life as a whole. Because that is why uh, in the glorious Quran and I believe in the Bible as well, uh, stories and uh, parables of prophets and other righteous persons have been rehearsed unto us so that we learn from their way of life, particularly the sacrifice we are talking about. You see in Ramadan that you started talking about uh, Muslims uh, abandon eating, drinking, and the uh, marital uh, relationships at some specific times. Now, these are things that are made lawful unto a person, but he, as a believer, is requested to abstain from those lawful things at certain times. So, as a believer, one has to submit and sacrifice his time and everything. And particularly, you can recall that the Ramadan this, uh, of this year, uh, particularly here in the north, the weather was hot. It was about sometimes 44 degrees centigrade, and they even sometimes 46 degrees centigrade. But uh, Muslims sacrificed and they uh, kept on fasting of those specified times. So uh, it, 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 this is what is required of a person, that in life, both the life of this world and the life hereafter, you have to sacrifice so that you can succeed. And that is what we can see in, uh, in, in academics and in everything uh, that they say, you know, the idea that no sweet without sweet. So one has to put the best so that you can get the best. Now, this is Ramadan. Yes. Then, okay. Then about, okay. I, I, was, going, yes. I, I was going to say that um, uh, one of the things that we're taught in all religious houses, but we're talking about Islam now and the mosques and um, Idul uh, Kabir, um, we're taught that some of the, these things that we do, we're supposed to uh, mm. bring them out into the world and... Um, use those as examples, as teaching uh, to know how to conduct oneself better for having gone through the experience. But in obedience to the uh, Almighty Allah, uh, people will take, um, mm -hmm. they, they, they will restrain themselves. Um, when you come out of it and you go back to a normal living, where does all that restraint go? Where do the lessons of all that go? The, the, the restraint that you had uh, is what hopefully would have been able to continue and be applied to the way we live our lives. But can you understand, Imam, when people are very, very mm -hmm. impatient now, nowadays, when people are impatient with the situation that they find themselves in in the country? 
Uh, yes. Uh, you see, as I said uh, uh, earlier, uh, that we learn from the past. We learn from the stories of the past. Now, as you talk about the sacrifice of Idul Abha, uh, some people call it Idul Kabir. Now, this, it is known, the, the, that is the Arabic uh, uh, definition, the actual name for it, it means the Feast of Sacrifice. And one of the uh, major wisdom behind it is to comm commemorate the sacrifice of both the son and the father and son in the, in the person of from the Quranic uh, uh, text uh, of Prophet Ibrahim, known as Abraham in the Bible, and his son Ismail, known as Ishmael in the Bible. Now, you see, uh, Prophet Abraham, this will be open him, uh, took about 90 or so years without a son. And at last, God gave him that son, Ismail. And that son that was, you know, God at last, was he was asked to sacrifice the son, which is on hand, to slaughter the son and sacrifice to God Almighty. And he asked, he told his son, according to the, according to the Quran, that, oh, my son, I was commanded to, to, to offer you a sacrifice. What do you say? He was not asking for whether to do it or not. No, he just he wanted to test the sacrifice of the son as well. And recall that the son was only about 12 to 13 years of age at that time. And the son said, yeah, our chief Alman Tumar, substituting me, inshallah, and Oh, my father. Go ahead, do what you are commanded to do by Almighty God. Verily, you will find me among the, the persevering ones. And the Quran says, Falamma aslama wa talabu chabin, wa nadinahu ayya Ibrahim, So when they sat, they, 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 both the father and the son submitted to the command of Almighty, and the father laid down the son, to slaughter as we lay down the, the, the animals to slaughter, making sure that he has submitted the Lord of God. Then later, God removed Ismail and he was asked to slaughter the ram. Now, God said, Such as what happened to, to Ibrahim and Ismail, that when it was sure that they submitted and they sacrificed to Almighty, to the one of Almighty, yeah. then they were rewarded. They so were, the exactly. pain was removed. Exactly. So uh, after the sacrifice become, comes the reward. You, you know, um, now, so. Um, I, 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 yes. I, my, 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 what, I, what I'm thinking is that both Ibrahim and his son, uh, Ismail, Yes. Uh, they, they had something yes. to depend on, the word of God. So mm -hmm. they had the word of yes. God to depend on. They weren't just acting anyhow. Mm -hmm. They weren't, they, were, they, yes. they had complete faith. Now, this is where I'm asking, yes. how, do we, how does one bring that to the situation that we have now? Because I think more than anything, we need patience. And it's not a religious enterprise. This is not... Um, the, the president is not God. He is saying what he is saying. Um, but it's all about the people now keying into that message and um, uh, persevering. And perhaps this is where there might be uh, some challenges. Uh, of course, we have to continue to be prayerful. Um, uh, do, do you think there is a, What would you say to Nigerians who, you know, because um, as I said, in the case of Ibrahim and his son, they had God to depend on. It was written, this is how it shall be. But in the case of government, even though you are sincere, even though you are giving us your word that, look, I am working around the clock and I'm going to even do more as we go ahead. What would you say to um, Nigerians who are a bit restive of this situation? Uh, how, do, we, do we have a time on our hands now where we have... Honest leadership, more honest than we've had before. People who, people who are determined.
to make a difference. Before you weigh in, Imam, let me bring in uh, Olaleko in the UK who has called in. Uh, good morning, Olaleko in the UK. Baraka good morning, Salah. Glory. Thank you. Baraka good morning. Salah to you, sir. Yes. Um, I just want to speak to the essay to Governor, uh, oh. Mr. Atari. Uh, well, but he, he's, he's left okay. now, and that subject is over, sir. Okay, all right. Okay. Would you like, to, would you like to weigh in on this one? Um, I think it's a bit slow because I'm watching you online, so I don't know which one you discuss now. What we're discussing now is the actual, you know, uh, we're, we're discussing the significance of Idil Kabir, the sacrifice that Ibrahim and his son both made, and how there are less, uh, there, what are the lessons there for application to our general society? Okay, thank you, sir. Well, we, 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 as the situation of our country now, we are paying this, that sacrifice because things is not easy. Nigeria just don't need to be endured, and they should give the current president a chance. He's a man who has been trusted, tested before. He, because I can remember when he was governor of Lagos State then, he tried when Lagos was very bad then. Was I, I know situation of Lagos State. You know, I can remember that time in first time in office, he struggled and he struggled, struggled very well. Well, and he still is now. Lagos is one of the biggest states in Nigeria. So definitely, I know things have been getting bad in our country. But if they come. That sacrifice for Ashwaju and definitely fix Nigeria. It's not easy, but that's kind of lesson we can learn. Okay, so indeed. Hopefully, things will be better in Nigeria. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you very much uh, for calling in. So, uh, well, Imam, back to you. Uh, I was asking for how this could be applied. Yes, trust is part of it. After all, it is said that we need to pray for our leaders. So, trust. Uh, yes. You, Can we trust our leaders? Yes, uh, thank you very much, my dear. Yes, sir. Please continue. Now, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Now, this issue is very important, asking about how can these lessons, these spiritual lessons be applied to our day-to-day -day life, particularly our dear country as we live together today and with, with the prevailing situation. Uh, what I would like to put forward here, uh, is that as we are required, particularly in Islam, to pray for our leaders, then the leaders as well are required to be exemplary, to be exemplary in life. Now, the sacrifice we are talking about, frankly speaking, the leaders have to sacrifice their lusts. I can recall, uh, like during the time of the second caliph in Islam, uh, that is Umar Abdullah Khan, that there was a famine during his time, there was hunger during his time, and Umar abandoned his lust so that uh, it can go across uh, other people. So this is part of what, frankly uh, speaking, our leaders have to do. Uh, even, even before this uh, government, we know that uh, there were complaints that uh, the expenditure on running government is, is so high in Nigeria. So, uh, as part of sacrifice, the expenditure has to be reduced to the minimum, to, to, the, to the bearable, considering the bearable uh, okay. uh, condition. Okay. Then, the followers as well should sacrifice their time because if the leaders are exemplary in what we are uh, calling one another to, then that will make uh, 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 followers put trust in them because they know that their leaders are not doing what they are not expected to do. Mm. Um, uh, you, you probably have heard, Imam, you, you, you've heard people complain that they think the perception is that they are actually doing more of the um, sacrificing uh, than their leaders, especially when they see their leaders and the way many people have expressed it, they are trappings of being okay, you know. Um, do you think governments, you know, we have very little time left. Do, do you think um, 
our leaders can do a, a better job of, um, you know, walking the talk and uh, not just saying it, but not participating in it. Do you feel it's a fair criticism from a lot of people who have said that? Look at the National Assembly. Look at the presidency. Look at the governor's office. Look at all these big shots. Nothing has come down for them. Yeah. It is only us that everything has come down for. Is it a fair critique, or would you want government to do a bit more uh, by way of showing that they are sacrificing too? Yes, I really want them to do more uh, by showing that they are sacrificing for the country to survive. They have to su su sacrifice. You, know, you, you can't imagine, uh, to be frankly, uh, to, to be frank, uh, somebody amassing about uh, 45 uh, or more or less uh, million naira a month, and while the, the the peasant person is trying to get what he can, what he can eat, yeah. so that person can reduce, uh, because what is yes, can reduce what the, the earning, so that all others can we can survive together, you know, the country. Because frankly, if there is no Nigeria, there is nobody then. You know, that's a fine, so Imam. In that respect, Imam, I beg your pardon, yes, sir. Um, I don't want to rush you in any way, shape, okay, or okay. form, but. Uh, that's a fine place to leave it. If we're not careful, uh, there won't be a Nigeria. And uh, that's the last thing on everybody's mind. So I want to thank you very much, sir, uh, for coming on and airing the subject of the significance of Edo Kabiru. Thank you uh, very much, sir, for coming on the program. Thank you very much. Thank right. you very much.